We've been on the road now in our Momentum 410TH for a couple of months, and I've got some issues that I need to fix that are annoying the crap out of us. First up is the drawer right over here under our coffee bar. Now every home has a junk drawer, and this one is ours. At some point, the piece of wood that secures the right side of that drawer slide failed or broke, letting that drawer kind of move a little bit more, and that in turn broke the left side and all the bearings just fell out and the thing fell apart. So I need to replace those drawer glides, no big deal. But before I do that, I have to repair the right side over there and give it something to attach to. All right, got myself a piece of wood here. It's got a 90 on here that I'm gonna use to secure it to the back. So all I'm going to do right now is get this piece set in here. I'm using Gorilla Glue wood glue on this. Probably any wood glue would be fine. I just like the Gorilla brand for some reason. It just seems to be a really good glue. Anyway, wood glue is great for this type of thing because it gives you plenty of time to move stuff around. It doesn't even start to cure for about 30 minutes. I secured that piece to the back wall using that 90 degree bracket, put glue all the way around it and clamped it down and let that sit. This is just a support to get a straight shot down on this. This is nice and flush right here. So let that dry overnight. We should be good to go. This has been drying for about 12 hours. It really only needs to be clamped for 30 minutes, but I left it clamped all night. Oh yeah, nice and nice and firm. 24 hours to fully cure, but that's really solid. I'm gonna go ahead and work with it. With that support rebuilt, installing the new glides is a simple process of just unscrewing the old ones and screwing the new ones in place, both in the drawer hole where the thing goes and of course on the drawer itself. Nice. We have a drawer that doesn't go flippity floppy anymore. This next thing isn't really an annoyance or a big deal. I just happened to be here with the camera, but it reminds me of just kind of a general point about traveling in these RVs. Our interstate systems are crap. There's construction everywhere and it's just, you're getting the hell beat out of you every time you go down the road. And it's inevitable in any RV for trim like that to fall down, have little problems in here. Now I carry this big nail gun that you can see and you don't need anything like that, but you're gonna wanna have maybe some finishing nails and a small hammer for this type of stuff to carry with you because trim will fall down. Next up are our basement door latches. Those things have been a pain. Today's annoying thing that I want to fix is super annoying, and that is right there. And here's what we got. So this side is good. That one is not. This one, I can pop it open. It opens nicely. This stays up, no problem. I can close it, no problem. This one, even after I oil it a lot or, or, or lube it, it's super stiff to open and you can see this stays down and stuck so that when I go to close it it just doesn't close at all and what's really odd about this is I keep this little nail here because every time I do this I got to put this in and push it up it's not binding here so it's binding in here somewhere so I'm just going to take this thing apart and see if I can figure out why some of these are binding and some of them are not. So I found the problem. This piece has this piece. So this pushes down on this, but you can see this is all just rusted in there. I am going to run to Home Depot and see if I can find a replacement for this in a stainless steel variety as well as these and replace this clean this all up and lube it and I think we'll be good to go one hour later so I went to Home Depot and I really couldn't find any uh couldn't find a bolt this short and I couldn't find a lock nut this shallow so I'm just gonna have to reuse what I have here I'm just gonna put it all back together and I'm going to put a bunch of grease in there. I think that'll help. 
I got that pivot point all greased up. You can see that I took it back apart and greased even the spot behind the pivot. So I ended up essentially greasing between every moving part on that little pivot point. And we've got it all greased. It's still a little sticky, but much better than it was. Nice, much better. The next day I got over onto the driver's side and did the same thing to a door that was doing the exact same thing over there. It was, it was the same as on this side. I had one that worked great and one that was sticking. After I took it apart, I realized it was the exact same problem over there. So I did the exact same fix and just greased the crap out of it. No more sticky doors. I'm curious if any of you have had this issue with baggage doors. The, the baggage door latches are actually, they're Lippert slam latches. I think they're pretty common. And you know, there's no grommet between the, the pieces and the door. And I don't think it would matter anyway, because the door mechanism itself is pretty wide open to the elements. That combined with the fact that there's ferrous metal in there that can corrode pretty easily and rust. Uh, it seems like this would be a pretty common problem. So I'm curious what you guys have seen and what you've done to fix it, if anything, or if you've just creased it like me or whatever. One more annoying thing that I just decided to add to the list today is this. There's a seam right there and it leaks down here into the door, creates marks on there, and generally makes it a pain when you're running the ACs and you want it to run down and drip off there. But instead, it's dripping on you right here while you're in the bay and things like that. Now, on our 397, I tried sealing that with uh, like some Dicor, even some regular silicone sealant, and it never seems to take. I think what I'm going to do is get a little bit of a Turnabon tape, just enough to fit in that little spot there where the crack is, and see if that will stay. Now, if you look on the top here, you can see the water actually running down to here, getting caught, and then just kind of going out some little crack or something there. When water comes from that main AC, which is our, well, the one we run the most, it rolls out down, down there, and then comes over here and then drips on my head. I got the old sealant scraped out of there and cleaned it up a little. It's not perfect, but a turnabond tape is pretty good at attaching to anything. So my plan is to kind of run this down like so and cover the whole thing through the groove. It's going to be hard for me to capture this and film it at the same time, so just bear with me. Alrighty, I think that is going to do it. It's pretty well sealed. The sides here. Once the seam was sealed, I simulated roof water runoff to test it. I'm going down. There where it should. There it goes off the front and dripping down there where it's supposed to. I don't know if you notice, but there's also a little bit of a joint or seam there on the outside of the gutter between the gutter and the awning. And that, I think when it rains, is probably gonna leak also. So I think I'm gonna get back up there and put another piece of a turnabond there. Just a little follow-up. We've got to our next location. It's much warmer here, so we have the AC going. And as you can see, I've got drips coming off of here. Got nothing over here. Boom. So that fix seems to be working. However, again, I'm really interested in what you guys have done. You know, all of these RVs that are longer than, you know, a segment of that gutter are going to have scenes in them. And I'm curious if all the manufacturers use just, you know, sealant in there or what they've done and what you've done to fix that situation. This next annoying fix is kind of a big one, both physically and with, you know, damage that it might do. And what we've got is our dryer has become a little bit detached from the washing machine and how it was mounted. And after traveling on these glorious roads of ours, this gets shaken around and ends up kind of like this. Let me show you. 
kind of like all out of whack and just kind of disconnected. It held up well for about a year, but after so much beating and so much thrashing, it could only take so much. Every laundry day after a travel day, I would have to go up there and basically just wrestle that thing back on top of the washing machine, get it all lined back up, and it would be good until the next travel day. But I was just really sick of doing that, and it's not great to have that thing just kind of bouncing around in there. I've got a couple of things I want to try here. First and foremost that I think is going to give us the biggest uh, gain is just to attach the two using these, well, I don't know what gauge or what thickness these are, but I just found these randomly at uh, Home Depot. And I've got some half inch self-tapping screws. I got these because I thought they might work well to hold it, but my little angle adapter to get up in here doesn't have enough room for it. I mean, it does when it's off its rails, but I'm gonna get that back on and see if I can get these little screws, actually probably these button heads, uh, because I was able to get this guy there nice and nice and shallow to screw those in. So let's just see if I can get this. If I can get this thing screwed in and secured on both sides, I don't think it's going to go anywhere. But I did also get some of this kind of like insulation foam board. It's about three inches on each side. I've got two of these panels that I can cut up and kind of jam along the edges here. So I think between those two things, it should hold its place while traveling. So I got those braces or straps or pieces of metal. I don't, I don't know what they're called. I don't even know what they're for. I just happen to be walking down through Home Depot and go, ooh, this would probably work for that. I got that on there. I basically used a piece of Gorilla Tape that I mentioned I like the Gorilla stuff. I used a piece of Gorilla Tape to hold it on there. And then using my little 90 degree adapter, I was able to screw in those little half inch screws into the sides of both of them. And we got here today after travel day and it was perfect. Nice, nice, nice. Da, 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 da. Still there. High five. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> In case you're wondering if I was nervous about putting screws just smack into the body of these units, I really wasn't. I mean, they're just half inch screws. Some of that is gonna be taken up by the plate, some of it by the actual material. And I doubt there's any more than a quarter or eighth of an inch actually going in there. Knowing how these things are built, most of the electronics are all up front and I really didn't think there would be anything on the side. We have since used these after screwing those in and everything's fine, so it didn't hurt anything. I ended up not using those pieces of like insulation foam or whatever it was. That was one of those things that I kind of picked up and thought, oh, this might work. And it didn't do as well as my other discovery there. But I'm curious what you guys might recommend. I'm looking for maybe some kind of dense foam about three inches wide or maybe a little bit wider that can compress down. Something to absorb the shock in there as things move around. So I'd love to hear your ideas on that. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.